This is CBS 8 News Live at 6. Happening tonight, high surf warnings and flood advisories are in effect for our coastal areas. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Kirsten Holmes in for Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. Massive waves have been pounding our coast all day long, and it's all because of that Pacific storm that just passed through. Tonight, Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis has more on the impact the storm is still having on our coast in just a moment. But first, let's go straight to CBS 8's Rocio De La Fe. She's live at Imperial Beach Pier. Rocio, how does it look out there right now? Well, it's hard to see right now since it's nighttime, but you could say conditions have greatly improved here in Imperial Beach. Right now, I'm actually standing in mud and that just gives you an idea of how far in the water made it here this morning. And again, this is just one of the many areas along our coastline that saw plenty of flood water this morning. This is what's left of the Pacific storm that brought rain to San Diego County. People along the coastline woke up to flooded streets and debris on the roads. It is um, exciting seeing all the, the energy that Mother Nature can bring out. Yeah. In Imperial Beach, high tides flooded the estuary, leaving a mess behind. It's kind of like uh, like a little mini hurricane. We, we, we got, a, uh, I guess you would say, the uh, um, you know, a swell that hit and came a little closer than we wanted it to. Thankfully, no houses were damaged. There was a little damage on the pier by the lifeguard tower, but other than that, I think IB, you know, we, we, we managed it pretty well. It's cleanup time. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's cleanup time. As you can see, yeah, the mess is, takes weeks to, to pick up with the, their maintenance crew here at the beach. It was also a busy morning for lifeguards. Chief James Gartland says there were five rescues between La Jolla and Sunset Cliffs. These are accomplished expert surfers that either break their leash or they have to pull their leash. They get stuck in a bad area with the high tide. Um, people are getting washed in on the rocks and on the reefs, so uh, lifeguards are having to go in there, swim them out, and get them to a boat and get them to safety. Over in Ocean Beach, a woman and her dog had to be rescued by lifeguards after her dog got swept away by rushing water from the San Diego River. Lifeguards are upstaffed. We have the jet skis out and patrolling. We have the surf boats out and patrolling. The chief is asking people to avoid getting in the water until conditions improve. It's not a good day for novice, even avid surfers. You got to be really accomplished and a good waterman to get out there and be able to negotiate these conditions. And we're told some of the waves here at Imperial Beach reach as high as 15 to 20 feet today. And even though conditions have improved throughout the day, officials are still asking people to stay out of the water for at least 72 hours just to avoid any of the pollution in that runoff water. Live from Imperial Beach, Rocio de la Fe, CBS 8. Thank you, Rocio. Those massive waves and a high tide also made for a big mess in Pacific Beach. Water washed up over the boardwalk and made its way down alleys and all the way into Mission Beach. The water also washed up on people's patios, did some damage there, and even flooded some homes. Wow. Wow, their house just got flooded over there. We woke up this morning, it was like sand all over our patio, and then right when we got up, we started water started coming over that wall that's there. So we started videotaping it and um, it looked like a river basically on the board. Coastal high surf warnings and flood advisories just expired a, a few minutes ago. OK, so what does that mean right now and going into the weekend? Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis hustled back to yeah. the beach, <laughs> yes. raced in yes. there, door flying yes. open. Yes. She was like her own weather system. Tell the tornado. truth. Tell the truth. That's but what we look, just saw. Look how, how much she has it together right now. Just, oh, she's, yes. she's so perfect right now. <laughs> so, but what's coming up next? Oh, so much going on. Yeah. So, yes, I was out there earlier. That was at Mission Beach. You saw the damage yeah. left behind because of those big waves. Now, the waves have subsided a little little bit, but we still have an alert, so it's been modified. You're not talking about the coastal flood advisory. We're not talking about the high surf warning, but we are talking about a beach hazard statement that will take us into the weekend. So as soon as we had 6 p.m. hit the coastal flood advisory and the high surf warning expired, but now we're talking about this alert all the way until 2 p.m. on Sunday. So the surf will continue to subside. It was up to about 10 feet for today. You're looking at five to seven by this weekend. Still dangerous, though, so it is marked that 72 hours after a big rainstorm, you should not be in the water. But also, if you're not a skilled swimmer, you should not be in the water. Dangerous surfing conditions, high risk of rip currents, and still potentially some beach erosion as well as some flooding right along the coastline cannot be ruled out as we will still have elevated 
light surf, just not as high as those sets up to about 20 feet. So high surf continuing through the weekend. Lots of sunshine this weekend. We put the pause on the rainy weather, but it does look to return to our forecast by Tuesday. And then yet another storm system that we'll be talking about around this time next week as we gear up for next weekend. So all those details are coming up in your complete forecast. Carlo. Thanks, Carlene. And you can show us the weather where you live. Maybe you had some incredible waves or flooding by sharing your photos and videos on the CBS 8 app. Go to the near me section at the bottom and then click on the share with us button. Up in Northern California, recent storms brought heavy rain and flooding to the Sacramento area. California's longest river, the Sacramento River, that's pretty swollen right now. Alicia Machado from our sister station in Sacramento gives us a live look at the river and concerns from people who are there living nearby. Alicia, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, good evening, Carlo and Kirsten. Take a look at the water levels right now along the Sacramento River. River rather, water levels are on the rise. When we look at our marker, levels are at about 25 feet tonight. With another round of rain expected to hit Northern California over the next several days, levels are expected to rise even further. The National Weather Service is forecasting levels to crest at 32 feet between Monday and Tuesday. Flood stage is at 33 and a half feet. Multiple communities in our region near other rivers have had to shelter in place or evacuate due to flooding concerns and more of the same is expected when this next round of rain comes in. Emergency operations officials, though, are warning residents to be prepared. All right, Alicia, have you heard from anyone living along the water? How are they doing right now? That area could flood. Yeah, Kirsten, we have heard from concerns, especially from someone I spoke with tonight who actually lives on this houseboat. Tonight they are staying in a hotel due to concerns. They actually were along the river the night that we had those storms around New Year's. A mother and her three children inside this boat during that storm. They tell me a large log actually crashed into their boat. Thankfully, they were able to get out to safety, but a very scary time for them. They say by a miracle, their boat was pinned against this portion of the dock, which actually kept them from drifting further out onto the river. Now, there is a lot of debris out on the water, but I'm told they will be able to get help to remove that log after this next system comes through. But we will continue to keep an eye on these water levels and any dangers for people who are living around this area. More rain on the way. We keep our fingers crossed for them that there's just not too much for them to deal with. Alicia Machado reporting for us live. Thanks, Alicia. Governor Gavin Newsom was sworn in for his second term today, and he took the opportunity to paint a picture of how California differs from the rest of the country. Yeah, our political reporter Morgan Reiner has more tonight on what the governor wants these next four years to look like. Newsom said it's time to choose. The battle lines are drawn. He spent a lot of time in his inaugural speech today comparing California to the rest of the country, how California defends democracy while also acknowledging there's a lot more work to do these next four years. Governor Gavin Newsom led a freedom march down Capitol Avenue, which led to the stage where he took the oath of office Friday afternoon. I, Gavin Newsom. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. On January 6th. Since that terrible day, we've wrestled with what, fundamentally what those events say about us as a country. A day picked with great purpose. Freedom is our essence, our brand name, an abiding idea that right here, anyone from anywhere can accomplish anything. We've overcome, haven't we, California? We've overcome the destructive impulses of extremism and racism and nativism and showing the rest of America it's not only achievable, it's undeniable. Newsom said California is defending freedom. The battle lines, they're drawn. And, and I'll say it <laughs> once again, it is time for choosing. One of the loudest moments of cheer came as Newsom spoke about the state enshrining the right to abortion. We overwhelmingly enshrined reproductive rights into our state constitution. While Newsom addressed the state's achievements. California, now the fourth largest economy in the world. He acknowledged more work is in store to deal with the state's biggest issues. We must continue our quest for an honest accounting for where we've fallen short. None of us are naive. 
on affordability, on, on housing, on homelessness. Democratic state lawmakers in attendance are ready to get to work for him. We need to work on inflation, drought, homelessness and housing and more, including the right to abortion and freedoms that he so aptly discussed. So we've got our work cut out for us, but we'll partner in the governor and it tells us we'll absolutely do the work California needs. While Newsom did say it's time to choose, he ended his speech by saying we have to triumph together. While Newsom spoke a lot about building on the freedoms here in California, there were no new policies announced today, but we could expect some of that when he announces his new budget proposal in just a matter of four days. Now, as soon as the speech wrapped up today, we got responses from California Republicans acknowledging what Newsom pointed out himself, the housing problem, the homeless problem, but they added on some others themselves like crime. They said if the last four years were an indication of the next four years that Californians are in for a wild ride. And in Riverside, a fallen deputy has been laid to rest. Tonight, his mother is calling for the resignation of the judge who let her son's killer out of jail. People line the streets today for the procession for Deputy Isaiah Cordero. He was shot and killed on December 29th during a traffic stop in Harupa Valley. The shooter, William McKay, was later killed in a shootout with law enforcement. The Riverside County Sheriff describes McKay as a career chem criminal with a violent history. And still ahead for you tonight, does the House Speaker have to be from the party that holds the majority? We verify. Plus what geologists are saying about Hawaii's most active volcano after it starts erupting again. It's been two years since the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. I'm Deborah Alferone with how this dark day in democracy is being remembered, plus what's next into the investigation into what started it all.